Encyclical Letter, Nostis et Nobiscum, on the Church in the Papal States, by Pope Pius IX. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Nostis et Nobiscum, on the Church in the Papal States, December 8, 1849. Encyclic of our Holy Father Pope Pius the Ninth to the Archbishops and Bishops of Italy. Venerable Brothers, Health and Apostolical Benediction. You know and you see like ourselves, Venerable Brothers, by what perversity in these last times have prevailed certain abandoned men, enemies of all truth, of all justice, of all honesty, who whether by fraud and artifices of every description, or openly and casting the dregs of their confusions like a raging sea its foam, are striving to spread in all directions among the faithful people of Italy unrestrained licentiousness of thought and word, and of all daring and impious actions, to ruin even in Italy the Catholic religion, and if that could ever be, to overturn it even to its foundations. The whole plan of their diabolical design hath shewn itself in diverse places, but especially in the well-beloved city, the seat of our supreme pontificate, where, after having constrained us to quit it, they have been able for some months to abandon themselves the more freely to all their madness. Then, in the midst of a frightful and sacrilegious confusion of things divine and things human, their rage ascended to such a point that despising the authority of the illustrious clergy of Rome and of the prelates, who by our order remained fearlessly at its head, they did not suffer them even to continue in fear the sacred work of their ministry, and that, without piety for the wretched sick folk, a prey to the anguish of death, they removed from them all the succors of religion, and constrained them to yield up their last sigh amid the blandishments of some wanton harlot. Although since then, the city of Rome and the other provinces of the pontifical states have been, thanks to the mercy of God, restored by the arms of the Catholic nations to our temporal government, although the wars and disorders which attended these events have in like manner ceased in the other countries of Italy, still these infamous enemies of God and man have not ceased, and cease not their work of destruction. They can no longer employ open force, but they have recourse to other means, some hidden under deceitful appearances, others visible to every eye. Surrounded by such great difficulties, holding the supreme charge of all the Lord's flock, and filled with the most lively affliction at the sight of the perils to which the churches of Italy are particularly exposed, it is for our infirmity, venerable brothers, in the midst of sorrows, a great consolation to behold that pastoral zeal of which, during the tempest that has just passed, you have given so many proofs, and which manifest itself yet daily by more and more striking proofs. However, the gravity of the occasion presses on us to rouse still more earnestly, by our word and our exhortations, according to the duty of our apostolic charge, your fraternity, called to share our solicitudes, to fight with us and in unity the battles of the Lord, to prepare and to adopt with a single heart all the measures by which, with God's blessing, the evil already done in Italy to our holy religion shall be repaired, and the perils with which it is immediately threatened shall be prevented and repelled. Among the numberless frauds, which the aforesaid enemies of the Church are in the habit of using to render the Catholic faith odious to the Italians. One of the most perfidious is that opinion which they do not blush to affirm, and to noise abroad everywhere, that the Catholic religion is an obstacle to the glory, the greatness and proficiency of the Italian nation, and that consequently, in order to restore to the Italian the splendor of the ancient times, that is to say, of the pagan times, it is necessary to substitute in the place of the Catholic religion, to insinuate, to propagate, and to set afoot the teaching of the Protestants and their conventicles. One knows not, in such assertions, which is the most detestable, 
the perfidy of their word or the impudence of their shameless falsehood the spiritual good whereby being withdrawn from the power of darkness we are transported into the light of god whereby grace justifying us we are made heirs of christ in the hope of eternal life this good of souls emanating from the holiness of the catholic religion is certainly of such a price that compared with this food all the glory and all the happiness of this world ought to be regarded as a mere nothing quid enem prodest omini si mundum universum meretur anime vere sue detrimentum patiatur aut quam dabit homo commutationem pro anima sua matthew chapter sixteen verse twenty six but far from the profession of the true faith having caused to the italian race the temporal losses which have been spoken of it is owing to the catholic religion that they did not fall at the breaking up of the roman empire into the same ruin as did the nations of assyria chaldea medea persia and macedonia no educated man in fact is ignorant that not only did the most holy religion of christ rescue italy from the clouds of those many and great errors that entirely overspread it but that furthermore in the midst of the ruin of the ancient empire and the invasions of the barbarians ravaging all europe we raised her in glory and greatness above all the nations of the world in such wise that by a singular benefit of god italy possessing in her bosom the sacred chair of peter has held by divine religion an empire more solid and more extensive than her old earthly dominion this singular privilege of possessing the apostolic see and of beholding by that very means the catholic religion taking the strongest root among the people of italy has been for that country the source of other and innumerable benefits for the most holy religion of christ the mistress of true wisdom the avenging protectress of humanity the fertile mother of all virtues turned aside the minds of the italians from that mournful thirst of glory which had led their ancestors to be perpetually making war to hold foreign nations under oppression to reduce according to the rights of war then prevalent an immense multitude of men into the hardest slavery and at the same time illuminating the italians with the rays of catholic truth she led them by a powerful impulse to the practice of justice and of mercy to the most splendid works of piety towards god and of beneficence towards mankind hence arose in the principal cities of italy so many holy basilicas and other monuments of the christian ages which were not the mournful work of a multitude reduced to slavery but which were freely raised by the zeal of a vivifying charity to which must be added the pious institutions of every description whether consecrated to the exercise of the religious life or to the education of youth to literature to arts to the sound cultivation of the sciences or lastly to the consolation of the sick and indigent such then is that holy religion which embraces under so many diverse titles the salvation the glory and the happiness of italy that religion which they would desire to make the people of italy throw aside we cannot restrain our tears venerable brothers when we see that there are to be found at this day some italians perverse enough abandoned enough to miserable illusions as not to dread applauding the depraved doctrines of the impious and conspiring with them for the ruin of italy but you are not ignorant venerable brothers that the principal authors of this detestable conspiracy have for their object to drive the people agitated by every wind of perverse doctrine to the overthrow of all order in human affairs and to deliver them up to the criminal systems of the newly invented socialism and communism now these men know and see by the long experience of many ages that they cannot hope for any approval from the catholic church which in the keeping of the deposit of the divine revelation never allows anything to be retrenched from or to be added to the truths propounded by the faith therefore they have formed the design of attracting the italian peoples to the opinions and to the conventicles of the protestants 
in which so they incessantly repeat in order to seduce them one ought to see nothing else but a different form of the same true christian religion where one can please god as well as in the catholic church meanwhile they know that nothing can be more useful to their impious cause than the first principle of the protestant opinions the principle of the free interpretation of the sacred scriptures according to the private judgment of each individual they are confident that after having first abused the false interpretation of the sacred writings to spread their errors they will the more easily as if in the name of god drive men onwards puffed up with the proud license of judging on divine subjects to call in question even the common principles of justice and virtue god forbid venerable brothers that that italy where the other nations have been accustomed to draw the pure waters of sound doctrine because the apostolic see has been established at rome becomes for them henceforth a stone of stumbling and of scandal god forbid that this cherished portion of the lord's vineyard be given over for a prey to wild beasts god forbid that the italian people having drunk madness from the poisoned cup of babylon should take up parasitical arms against the mother church as for us and you whom god in his secret judgment has reserved for these times of so great danger take we care not to fear the stratagems and attacks of those men who conspire against the faith of italy as if we had to conquer them by our own strength since christ is our counsel and our strength christ without whom we can do nothing but by whom we can do everything labor therefore venerable brothers watch with still greater vigilance over the flock which is entrusted to you and use all your efforts to defend it from the ambushes and the attacks of ravening wolves communicate to each other your designs continue as you have already begun to hold meetings between yourselves to the end that having discovered by a united investigation the origin of our evils and according to the diversity of places the principal sources of the dangers you may be able therein to discover under the authority and guidance of the holy see the most prompt remedies and that so unanimously agreeing with us you may by god's help and with all the vigour of the pastoral zeal apply your cares and labours to render vain all the efforts all the artifices all the snares and all the machinations of the enemies of the church to arrive at this end we must labor without ceasing lest the people too little instructed in the law of the lord deadened by the long license of their vices but faintly perceive the snares which are being spread for them and the wickedness of the errors which are proposed to them we earnestly require of your pastoral zeal venerable brothers never to cease applying all your pains in order that the faithful who are entrusted to you may be instructed according to the intelligence of each in the most holy dogmas and precepts of our religion and that they may be at the same time warned and excited by all means to conform thereunto their life and manners influence for that end the zeal of the ecclesiastics of those of them especially that have the cure of souls in order that meditating profoundly on the ministry which they have received in the lord and having before their eyes the prescriptions of the council of trent they may devote themselves with the greatest activity according as the necessity of the times requires to the instruction of the peoples and may apply themselves to engrave in their hearts of all the sacred words the counsels of salvation making them know by brief and simple discourses the vices which they ought to fly in order to avoid eternal pain the virtues which they ought to seek in order to obtain celestial glory it is necessary to take care in an especial manner that the faithful themselves may have profoundly engraven upon their souls the dogma of our most holy religion on the necessity of the catholic faith for the obtaining of salvation for that end it will be of sovereign utility that in the public prayers the faithful united with the clergy render from time to time particular acts of thanksgiving to god for the inestimable benefit of the catholic religion that they all of them hold fast to his infinite goodness and that they beseech humbly the father of mercies to deign to protect and preserve inviolate 
in our countries the profession of the same religion you will however especially take care to administer to all the faithful at a convenient time the sacrament of confirmation which by a sovereign benefit of god imparts the strength of a particular grace to confess with constancy the catholic faith even in the midst of the gravest perils nor are you ignorant that it is useful for the same object that the faithful purified from the stains of their sins expiated by a sincere detestation of them and by the sacrament of penance frequently receive with devotion the most holy eucharist which is the spiritual nourishment of souls the antidote which delivers us from daily faults and preserves us from mortal sins the symbol of that only body of which christ is the head and to which he has willed that we should be attached by that strong tie of faith hope and charity so that we may be all that one body and that there may be no schisms among us we doubt not but that the cures their vicars and the other priests who on certain days and especially at the season of fast devote themselves to the ministry of preaching will be eager to afford you their cooperation in all these things however it is necessary from time to time to assist their efforts by the extraordinary aids of spiritual exercises and holy missions which when they are confided to capable men are with the blessing of god very useful to warm the piety of the good to excite to a salutary penance sinners and men depraved by long habits of vice to make the faithful people believe in the knowledge of god to make them produce all sorts of good works and fortifying them with the abundant succor of celestial grace to inspire into them an invincible horror of the perverse doctrines of the enemies of the church for the rest in all these things your pains and those of your priests your fellow workers will be directed particularly to make the faithful conceive the greatest horror for these crimes which are committed to the great scandal of their neighbor for you know how in diverse places has multiplied the number of those who dare publicly to blaspheme the saints of heaven and even the most holy name of god or who are known as living in concubinage and sometimes joining incest thereto or who on holidays devote themselves to servile works their shops being open or who in the presence of mary despise the precepts of fasting and abstinence or who do not blush in the same manner to commit diverse other crimes god grant that at the voice of pure zeal the faithful people may represent to themselves and seriously consider the enormous gravity of sins of this kind and the most severe pains with which their author shall be punished as well for the special criminality of each act as for the spiritual danger which they make their brethren incur by the contagion of their bad example in it is written ve mundo a scandalis ve omini ili perquem scandalum venit matthew chapter eighteen verse seven among the diverse kinds of frauds by which the most crafty enemies of the church and of human society strive to lead the people astray that certainly stands among the foremost which they had prepared long ago in their nefarious designs in which they have discovered in the wicked use of the new system of bookmaking nove artis librarii to this therefore they direct all their attention that they may never cease publishing among the vulgar and multiplying impious pamphlets journals and flysheets full of falsehood calumnies and seductions nay using even the assistance of the bible societies which have been long ago condemned by this holy see they do not fear to scatter abroad the sacred scriptures translated contrary to the rules of the church into the vulgar tongue and so corrupted and by a detestable daring distort to a false sense and under the pretense of religion to recommend the reading thereof to the people hence according to your wisdom venerable brothers you very well understand with how great vigilance and solicitude you must labor in order that your faithful flocks may abhor the pestiferous reading of those books and that particularly in regard to the sacred scriptures they may remember that no man may so arrogate to himself as resting on his own prudence to presume to distort them to his own sense 
contrary to the sense in which Holy Mother Church has held and doth hold them. To whom indeed alone has it been commanded by Christ the Lord that she keep the deposit of the faith, and judge concerning the true sense and interpretation of the divine oracles. But to restrain the contagion of wicked books, it will be highly useful, venerable brothers, that whoever about you are men of distinguished and sound learning, should put forth other writings also of small bulk, first of all, of course, approved of by you, unto the edification of the faith and the salutary instruction of the people. And it will be thenceforward your care that the same writings, as also other books, in like manner of incorrupt doctrine and approved utility, written by others, be circulated among the faithful, according as the circumstances of places and persons shall suggest. But all who labor with you for the defense of the faith will have especially an eye to this, that they confirm, defend, and deeply fix in the minds of your faithful people that piety, veneration, and respect towards this supreme see of Peter, in which you, venerable brothers, so greatly excel. Let the faithful people remember that there here lives and presides in the person of his successor Peter, the prince of the apostles, whose dignity faileth not even in his unworthy heir. Let them remember that Christ the Lord hath placed in this chair of Peter the unshaken foundation of his church, and that he gives to Peter himself the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and that he prayed, therefore, that this faith might fail not, and commanded him to confirm his brethren therein, so that the successor of St. Peter holds the primacy over the whole world, and is the true vicar of Christ and head of the whole church, and father and doctor of all Christians. And it is assuredly in the maintenance of this communion of the nations with the Roman pontiff, and of their obedience to him, that a short and compendious road is found to preserve them in the possession of the Catholic faith. For neither is it possible that any one should ever, in any point whatever, rebel against the Catholic faith, except he also throw aside the authority of the Roman Church, in which is extant the unchangeable dictation, informabili magisterium, of the same faith founded by the divine Redeemer, and in which, therefore, has always been preserved that tradition which is derived from the apostles. Hence it is that not only the ancient heretics, but even the Protestants, whose disunion in the rest of the principles is otherwise so great, have had this always in common, that they attacked the authority of the apostolic see which never at any time, or by any art or endeavor, have they been able to persuade to allow of even so much as one of their errors? Wherefore also, the enemies of God and of human society at this day leave nothing unattempted to tear away the Italian people from their obedience to us and to that same holy see. Supposing, of course, that then, and then only, may they possibly succeed in contaminating Italy itself with the impiety of their doctrine and new systems. And as regards these wicked doctrines and systems, it is now known to all men that they chiefly have an eye to this, that abusing the name of liberty and equality, they may insinuate the ruinous inventions of communism and socialism among the common people. But it is evident that the masters of communism or socialism themselves, though acting by different ways and methods, have at least this design in common that after having deceived the working classes and others, chiefly of the lower ranks, by their fallacies, and deluded them with the promise of a happier condition, they may agitate them with continual commotions, and train them, by degrees, for greater crimes, in order that hereafter they may be able to use their assistance to attack the rule of every superior authority, to rob, sack, or invade the possessions, first of the church, and afterwards those of all others whomsoever, to violate, in fine, all divine and human laws, unto the destruction of the divine worship, and the subversion of all the order of civil societies. In this extreme danger of Italy, it is your office, venerable brothers, to strain every nerve of pastoral zeal, that the faithful people may perceive that such like perverse principles and systems if they allow themselves to be deceived by them, will end alike in their temporal and eternal ruin. Let, therefore, the faithful, 
entrusted to your care be admonished that it pertains to the very nature of human society that all ought to obey the authority legitimately constituted in it and that nothing can be changed in the precepts of the lord which are proclaimed in the sacred scriptures on that subject for it is written subjecti estote omni humani creature propter deum sive regi quasi precelenti sive ducibus tom quam ab eo missis ad vindicam malefactorum laurum vero bonorum quia sic est voluntas dei ut benefacientes ob mutescere faciatis imprudentium ominum ignorantiam quasi liberi et non quasi velameo abentes malitiae libertatem sed sicut servi dei first peter chapter two verses thirteen and following and again omnis anima potestatibus sublimioribus subditasit non est enim potestas nisi adeo que autem sunt adeo ordinate sunt itaque qui resistit potestati dei ordinationi resistit qui autem resistunt ipsi sibi damnationem acquirunt romans chapter thirteen verse one and following let them know moreover that in like manner it belongs to the natural and therefore unchangeable condition of human affairs that even among those who are not in high authority still some prevail over others whether on account of different endowments of soul or body or on account of riches and external goods of that kind nor by any pretense of liberty and equality can it ever come to pass that it be lawful to attack or in any way whatsoever to violate the possessions or the rights of others under this head also do we find divine precepts everywhere inculcated in holy scripture whereby we are strictly prohibited not merely from seizing the property of others but even from coveting it but above all let the poor and all wretched men whatsoever remember how much they themselves owe to the catholic religion in which the doctrines of christ flourishes undefiled and is openly preached who has declared that he regards benefits bestowed on the poor or wretched as if they were done unto himself and he is willed to forewarn all men of the special account which in the day of judgment he will take of those same works of mercy whether in giving the rewards of eternal life to the faithful who have labored therein or in afflicting the punishment of eternal fire on those who have neglected them in consequence of which declaration of christ our lord and other most severe admonitions of his concerning the use of riches and the dangers of them which admonitions have been inviolably obeyed in the catholic church it has come to pass that in catholic nations the poor and wretched are placed in a much more tolerable condition than in any other nations whatsoever and they indeed would obtain in our italy yet more abundant succors if several institutions which had been provided by the piety of our ancestors for their consolation had not been lately destroyed or robbed in the repeated commotions of public affairs for the rest let our poor remember christ himself teaching them that there is no reason why they should be sad about their condition since in poverty itself there is prepared for them an easier way to obtain salvation if only they patiently bear their indigence and are poor not in outward circumstances only but in spirit for he saith beati paupere spiritu quoniam ipsorum est regnum celorum matthew chapter five verse three let also the whole faithful people know that the ancient kings of pagan nations and those who ruled public affairs therein much more grievously and frequently abused their power and hence let them learn that it is to be accounted as one of the benefits arising from our most holy religion if fearing that most severe judgment which according to the warnings of religion will be held on those who rule and the eternal punishment destined for sins in which the mighty shall mightily suffer torments the princes of christian times exercise a more just and merciful government towards the people subject to them lastly let the faithful entrusted to your and our care acknowledge that the true and perfect liberty and equality of man is placed in keeping the christian law 
since Almighty God, who hath made the little and the great, and who hath an equal care over all, will not withdraw from judgment the person of any one, and hath appointed a day in which he shall judge the world with equity, in his only begotten Son, Christ Jesus, who shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then shall render to every one according to his works. But if the same faithful, despising the fatherly admonitions of their pastors, and the above-mentioned commands of the Christian law, allow themselves to be deceived by the aforesaid promoters of the conspiracies of the day, and choose to plot with them for the perverse system of socialism and communism, let them know and seriously consider that they are treasuring up unto themselves with the divine judge treasures of vengeance against the day of anger, nor that any temporal utility can in the meantime arise to the people from that conspiracy, but rather new increases of miseries and calamities. For it is not given unto man to found new societies and communities opposed to the natural condition of human affairs. And therefore, if such conspiracies were spread throughout Italy, no other issue could come of them than that the existing state of human affairs having been shaken and overthrown to its foundation by mutual attacks of citizens against citizens, by usurpations and slaughters, some few men at length, enriched by the spoils of many, should snatch the supreme dominion in the midst of the general ruin. To turn aside the faithful people from the snares of the impious, to maintain them in the profession of the Catholic religion, and to excite them to the works of true virtue, the example and the lives of those who have devoted themselves to the sacred ministry has, as you know, a great power. But, O oh mournful fact, that there are found ecclesiastics in Italy, in small numbers, it is true, who have passed into the ranks of the enemies of the church, and who have not a little aided them in deceiving the faithful. For you, venerable brothers, the fall of these men has been a new spur to urge you on to watch with a more and more active zeal in maintaining the discipline of the clergy, and here, being desirous, according to our duty, of taking preservative measures for the future, we cannot refrain from again recommending you a point on which we have already insisted in our first encyclical letter to the bishops of the whole world, and we remind you never lightly to lay your hands upon any one and to apply the most attentive care in the choices of the ecclesiastical warriors. It is necessary that a long search, a minute investigation, should be made on this subject, especially of those who desire to enter into holy orders. It is necessary to assure yourselves that they are recommended by the gravity of their manners, and by their zeal for the divine worship in such wise as to give you the certain hope that like burning lamps in the house of the Lord, they shall be able, by their conduct and by their works, to procure unto your flock spiritual edification and profit. The Church of God draws from monasteries, when they are well conducted, an immense utility and a great glory. And the regular clergy afford to yourselves, in your labors for the health of souls, a precious succor, which is the reason, venerable brothers, why we desire you first of all to assure, on our part, the religious families of each of your dioceses, that in the midst of such great sorrow, we have in a special manner felt the evils which several of them have had to suffer in these bad times, and that the courageous patience, the constancy and the love of virtue and of their religion, of which a great number of religious have given the example, has been to us a source of consolation so much the more lively, because we have seen others of them, forgetting the sanctity of their profession, to the great scandal of good people, and filling with bitterness our heart and the hearts of their brethren, shamefully go astray. In the second place, you will exhort, in our name, the chiefs of those religious families and, when necessary, the superiors who are administering them, to neglect none of the duties of their charge, in order to render regular discipline, where it is maintained, more and more vigorous and flourishing, and to re-establish it in all its integrity and all its force, wherever it may have received some diminution. These superiors will unceasingly, both by admonitions, representations, and reproaches, 
remind the religious of their houses that they ought seriously to consider by what vows they are bound towards god to apply themselves to keep what they have promised to him to observe inviolably the rules of their institute to abstain from all that is not compatible with their vocation to give themselves up wholly to the works which comprise charity towards god and our neighbors and the love of perfect virtue on all these subjects let the rulers of those orders vigilantly take care that the entrance to them be not open to any person except after a profound and scrupulous examination of his life his manners and his character and that no person be admitted therein to the religious profession except after having given in a novitiate made according to the rules proofs of a true vocation in such wise that no one may have good reason to presume that the novice does not embrace the religious life except to live unto god alone and to labor according to the rule of his institute for his own salvation and that of his neighbor on this point we desire and intend the observation of all that was commanded and prescribed for the good of religious families in the decrees published on january twenty fifth of last year by our congregation on the state of the regulars decrees clothed with the sanction of our apostolic authority after having thus spoken to you of the regular clergy we desire to recommend to your fraternity the instruction and education of clerk minors for the church can have little hope of finding worthy ministers except among those who from their youth and their first age have been according to the prescribed rules formed unto that holy ministry continue then venerable brothers to use all your resources to put forth all your efforts in order that the recruits of the sacred soldiery may be as much as possible received in the ecclesiastical seminaries from their earliest years and that ranged around the tabernacle of the lord they may grow and increase like a new plantation in innocence of life religion modesty the ecclesiastical spirit learning at the same time from chosen masters whose teaching shall be truly exempt from all danger of error letters the elementary and higher sciences but above all sacred letters and sciences but as you will not be able without difficulty to complete the education of all the clerks minors in the seminaries and as assuredly the younger portion of the laity ought besides to be also the object of your pastoral solicitude watch equally venerable brothers on all the other schools public and private and as much as in you lies employ your influence and use your efforts in order that in those schools the studies may be in all respects conformable to the rule of catholic doctrine and that the youth assembled therein receiving instructions in letters arts and sciences may have none but masters irreproachable in respect to religion and manners who teaching them also true virtue may place them in a position of perceiving the snares set by the impious of avoiding their miserable errors and of serving usefully and honorably christian society and civil society it is for this reason that you will claim the principal authority an authority wholly unfettered over the professors of the various branches of sacred study and over all things which belong to religion or which touch upon it nearly be vigilant that in nothing and for the sake of nothing but above all in nothing that touches the affairs of religion any books are used in the schools except those which are free from every suspicion of error warn those who have the charge of souls to be your vigilant cooperators in all that concerns the schools of children and of youth of the first age let not the schools be confided to any but masters and mistresses of approved virtue and in order to teach the elements of the christian faith to infants whether boys or girls let such books only be used as are approved of by the holy see on this point we cannot doubt but that the cures will be the first to give the example and that urged by your incessant exhortations they will apply themselves every day more and more to instruct infants in the elements of christian doctrine remembering that this is one of the gravest duties of the charge with which they are entrusted you ought in like manner to recall to them that in their instructions whether addressed to children or to the people they should never lose sight of the roman catechism published conformably to the decrees of the council of trent by order of pope pius v 
a predecessor of immortal memory and recommended to all pastors of souls by other sovereign pontiffs for example by clement the eighth as a means of all others the most proper to repel the deceits of perverse opinions to propagate and to establish in a solid manner true and sound doctrines you will not be astonished venerable brothers if we speak to you at some length on this subject your prudence assuredly has perceived that in these perilous times we ought we and you to make the greatest efforts to employ every means to strive with unshaken constancy to exercise a continual vigilance on everything which regards schools the instruction and education of children and young people of both sexes you know that in our days the enemies of religion and of human society urged by a truly diabolical spirit apply themselves by every means to pervert the understanding and hearts of young people from their earliest age in this object there is no means which they do not set at work there is no audacious enterprise which they do not attempt to withdraw entirely from the authority of the church and the vigilance of the pastors the schools and every establishment destined for the education of youth we have then the firm hope that our most dear sons in jesus christ all the princes of italy will aid your fraternity with their powerful patronage to the end that you may be able to discharge with more fruit the duties of your charge of which we have just reminded you no more do we doubt but that they have the will to protect the church and all her rights whether spiritual or temporal nothing is more conformable to the religion or the piety which they have inherited from their ancestors and with which they show themselves animated it cannot escape their wisdom that the first cause of all the evils with which we are overwhelmed is no other than the evil done to religion and to the catholic church in former times but above all at the epoch when the protestants appeared they see for example that the growing contempt of the authority of the holy pontiffs that the violations every day more numerous and unpunished of divine and ecclesiastical precepts have diminished in a proportionate degree the respect of the people for the civil power and opened to the actual enemies of public tranquillity a wider road to revolts and sedition they see in like manner that the oft-renewed spectacle of the temporal goods of the church being invaded divided publicly sold although they belonged to her in virtue of a legitimate right of property and that the weakening in the popular mind of the feeling of respect for properties consecrated by religious destination have had the effect of rendering a great number of men more accessible to the audacious assertions of the new socialism and of communism teaching that one may in the same manner seize on other properties and divide them or transform them in all other ways for the use of all they further see falling little by little on the civil power all the snares long ago multiplied with such perseverance to impede the pastors of the church from freely using their sacred authority they see finally that in the midst of the calamities which are oppressing us it is impossible to find a remedy of more prompt effect and greater efficiency than religion and the catholic church flourishing again and regaining her splendor throughout italy the catholic church which possesses as none can doubt the most proper means for succoring the diverse wants of man in all conditions and in fact to use here the words of saint augustine the catholic church embraces not only god himself but further love and charity for our neighbor in such wise that she has remedies for all the maladies to which souls are incident by reason of their sins she exercises and instructs infants in a manner appropriate to their age the young with strength the old with tranquillity each in a word according to what is required by the age not only of his body but of his mind she subjects the wife to her husband by a chaste and faithful obedience not to satisfy licentiousness but to propagate the human race and to preserve domestic society thus she makes the husband the head of the wife not that he may make that weaker sex his slave 
but that both of them may obey the laws of a sincere love she subjects sons to their parents in a kind of free servitude and the authority which she gives to parents over their children is a sort of compassionate lordship she unites brothers to brothers by a tie of religion stronger and closer than the tie of blood she draws together all the bonds of relationship and alliance by a mutual charity which respects the ties of nature and those which different wills have formed she teaches servants to attach themselves to their masters not so much by reason of the necessities of their condition as by the attraction of duty she makes masters gentle to their servants by the thought of their common master almighty god and makes them prefer the paths of persuasion to those of constraint she binds citizen to citizen nation to nation and all men with each other not only by the social bond but further by a sort of fraternity the fruit of the recollection of our first parents she instructs kings to have always in view the good of their subjects she warns the people to submit themselves to kings she teaches all with a solicitude which nothing can tire to whom honor is due to whom affection to whom respect to whom fear to whom consolation to whom admonition to whom exhortation to whom discipline to whom reprimand to whom punishment showing how all these things are not due to all but that to all charity is due and to none injustice it is then our duty and yours venerable brothers not to recoil before any labor to face all difficulties to employ all the force of our pastoral zeal to protect among the italian people the worship of the catholic religion not only by opposing ourselves energetically to the efforts of the impious who are carrying on the conspiracy of tearing italy herself from the bosom of the church but still more in laboring mightily to recall into the way of salvation those degenerate sons of italy who have already had the weakness to allow themselves to be led astray but every excellent good and every perfect gift comes from above let us therefore approach with confidence to the throne of grace venerable brothers let us not cease to pray with supplication to beseech by public and private prayers the heavenly father of lights and mercies that by the merits of his only son our lord jesus christ turning his face from our sins he may enlighten to his clemency all spirits and all hearts by virtue of his grace that subduing rebellious wills he may glorify holy church with new victories and new triumphs and that in all italy and in every land the people which serve him may increase in number and in merit let us also invoke the most holy mother of god the immaculate virgin mary who by her all-powerful patronage with god obtaining all whatsoever she asks cannot ask in vain let us invoke with her peter the prince of the apostles paul his brother in the apostolate and all the saints of heaven that god most merciful appeased by their prayers may turn from the faithful people the scourges of his anger and accord in his goodness unto all those who bear the name of christians power by his grace both to reject whatever is contrary to the holiness of that name and to practice whatever is conformable thereunto lastly venerable brothers in testimony of our lively affection towards you receive the apostolical benediction which from the bottom of our heart we lovingly impart both to you and to the clergy and to the faithful people entrusted to your vigilance end of encyclical letter nostis et nobiscum on the church in the papal states december eighth eighteen forty nine by pope pius the ninth read by michael shane craig lambert l c toulouse france